Super Mario Bros. is a game that defined many children's childhood. For example, mine. Spending time as a plumber defeating monsters was honestly one of the best things I could do to pass the time. But I always had this weird, like, interest, I would say, to make my very own Mario game. But I never really found any real solution. But it turns out, it also taught me a very important lesson as to how not everything is, is possible inside of life. And some things just cannot happen. Oh. So it turns out you can. Okay, well, I was also not a very smart kid growing up. But anyways, now I'm a pretty smart kid. And now I'm going to be using all of my skills inside of CS and Go. And building my very own Super Mario video game. Before even starting our game, or even getting anywhere, we need to make a plan. So recently I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty Zombies, and the gist of Call of Duty is that you kill an enemy, and then your enemies will just come back stronger and stronger. And I've also recently watched Captain America Winter Soldier, which comes across uh, a terrorist group called Hydra. And they have that philosophy where if you cut one head off, two more heads regrow. So I'm thinking of making a game where Mario's in a closed room and he fights Goombas. And each time he kills one of them, two more will spawn with twice the speed and the damage. So the first thing I went ahead and did was create some ground for Mario to walk on. To do this, all I had to do was go into the Go Raylib documentation and figure out all the attributes of a rectangle. So I took all those attributes and created a struct for ground. The next thing I went ahead and did was take that struct and create a slice of it. Inside of this, I went ahead and created two rectangles, one of which acts as a ground and the other acts as a ledge, where Mario can jump towards or stand on. I'm going to go ahead and add colliders later on in the video. Now let's go ahead and create the character Mario himself. The next thing I started working on was my character controller. The character controller started off pretty simple. First thing I did was find two uh, free textures, or assets, for Mario, one for the left and one for the right. I decided to go ahead and load these into my game. After that I gave it uh, basic keyboard commands in order for the texture to change. One was W, or one was D, and one was A. A was to move to the left side and D was to move to the right side. And the textures would constantly change depending on which button was clicked. After this, what I did was uh, work on the Y coordinates and the jumping mechanism. The jumping mechanism was a bit tricky. First I did was check to see if Mario is on the ground. Then he was allowed to jump by pressing the W or the space key. The reason behind this is because I didn't want Mario jumping in mid-air, as that would basically allow him to fly, which is a pretty broken ability if you think about it. Now that that was done, I had to find a way for Mario to fall back down. I decided to go ahead and reference my ground struct that I created earlier, all right? And the reason why I did this is because the ground will be the center of gravity. And if it's not there, then what's going to happen is that the y coordinates are just going to constantly decrease by or increase by 5 pixels. It's increasing instead of decreasing because the canvas is basically upside down in Raylib. Uh there might be a way to fix that, but I'm frankly too lazy to fix that right now. Now you might be wondering how can I uh, what about the ledge? Now, an issue that happened with the ledge was that Mario was follow, falling right through the ledge. In order to fix this, what I decided to go ahead and do was, was to take my Y coordinates and basically add 50 to it, or subtract 50 to it, each time it comes into collision with any of the grounds. And as a result, it basically eliminates all of the effects of gravity, each time it's touching a piece of ground. And yeah, and this is how it looks. Now, you might be wondering that I don't have any animations. Frankly, I'm kind of too lazy to implement them. I'm sure if I, you know, worked a bit harder, I could probably find one. But for now, this is, this will do. Anyway, let's move on to the next step. The next thing we want to go ahead and do is add some enemies so that Mario can fight them. The first thing I went ahead and did was create a struct that had all of the enemies' attributes. It had the basic X and Y coordinates as to where the Goomba will be drawn. The next thing it had was the damage and the velocity. The damage isn't really important right now, but will be more important later when the game's fully complete. Now for the velocity, uh, I've decided to change it by using two symbol colliders that check to see if the Goomba has hit any walls. If it hit the, the wall right at the end, the velocity turns negative, and if it hit the wall at the start, the velocity turns positive. This will direct the Goomba to go left and right. The next thing I have is a directional attribute, which is a boolean. The purpose of this is to switch between the two frames of the Goomba. 
The next thing I have uh, is another boolean that checks to see whether the Goomba should be drawn. This is because Goombas that have been killed will be set to false. I originally wanted to just set the Goomba's index as to nil, but that led to multiple index and memory errors. And here is some gameplay. So yeah, as you can see, the Goomba constantly changes between the frames, and once it collides right over here, it moves all the way back here. All right, and the colliders are the same for both Mario and the Goomba. Uh, and yeah, now the next thing we need to go ahead and do is implement a firing mechanism, and then just work on the basic, you know, like uh, wrapping up of the game, so like a scoring mechanism and a damaging bar, because right now nothing's happening. So let's go ahead and start begin that. Starting off with the bullets was pretty straightforward. The first thing I went ahead and did was create a struct called bullets. And I first had the X and Y coordinates mapped out, and the X coordinates would constantly change depending on whether or not the bullet was supposed to go in the right or left direction. The right or left direction was simply determined by a boolean that basically told the, that was simply left, uh, true or false, and as a result would just constantly impact the X coordinates. The next thing I went ahead and checked was to see if the uh, if there were any collisions regarding the bullet and the enemy. To do this, I decided to load up the entire bullet struct inside of the enemy struct. And each time they collided, I would go ahead and set the draw of the bullet to be false, as well as for the enemy. Now, I didn't want the game to be too broken for Mario, and I wanted him to shoot a fireball once at a time. So what I did was, was create a, a new variable, and I called it should shoot. Now the way should shoot worked was that it was initially true, because I want Mario to shoot at the start. However, each time you shoot, the boolean turns false, and it will only turn true if the ball hits a player or goes off screen. And this worked charmlessly, despite its paradoxical nature, it worked very nice. And in fact, here is a demonstration as to how it works. The scoring system in UI was pretty simple, mainly thanks to Raylib and having, you know, very clean UI altogether. I made two integers, one for health and one for score, and based on the collisions of the health, I would decrease the health, and it would change colors if it was below 50 or 10, and if the health was below 0, then that means that the game ended, and it would display the score and unload all assets, and it would, you know, add to the scores each time there's a collision between the ball and the Goomba. Now that's it for this video, uh, have a nice day, and if you guys want to watch some gameplay, well, just stick around for, I guess, 20 more seconds.